Hello there ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys had a fantastic day and welcome back to playing with subscriber craft where I rip apart your craft, roast it, burn it, shoot it, play with it and do all kinds of horrible stuff with it and provide you with an honest review. And what we have here today is a big battleship called the Dominator. This thing is submitted to me by Prosparkar. Hopefully, again, I didn't butcher your name. <laughs> I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> and guys, if this thing reminds you of the white flares, well, if this thing doesn't remind you of the white flares, there's something wrong with your eyes. This is basically the perforator's hole taken and modified to such an extent that you cannot call it the perforator anymore. I think it is the perforator's hole because a lot of the white flare godlies look the same and I cannot judge which hull it is but it most definitely resembles the perforator the most. So yeah, a big battleship with a lot of firepower. This thing costs around 426k and is 38k volume. That's gonna be a while for me today. <laughs> and I think I have nailed the color scheme of this thing this time. Moves at around 11 to 12 meters per second. Not really a speedy ship, but definitely a hard heading ship. Let's move on to the inspection, shall we? And now that I have discolored this craft, this looks like it's made completely out of metal and some heavy armor in the inside. So let's check out the armoring scheme. Yep. Abominable amounts of metal everywhere. Just everywhere. Look at that. <laughs> so let's start with the front. It looks like it is a solid block of... Wow. <laughs> How much is that? 10 metal the bow is a solid block of 10 metal this is impenetrable from the front that is for sure <laughs> then there is the ammo of course separated into compartments by heavy armor so they don't blow up all at once this is yeah heavily armored I am pretty sure even though all the ammo blows up it would not damage the ship at all just because of the ridiculous armor stacking and by the looks of it in the sides it has three layers of metal armor which is pretty good armoring and then in some places it is two layers but then it moves on to have three layers again so yeah in the interconnections there is two layers and normally it has three layers even in here it has three layers of metal and begins the fourth layer of light armor yep that will contribute to a lot of buoyancy I think the ship might be buoyancy neutral but I cannot say for sure these propellers work their asses off even in the water maybe they are for the stabilization purposes maybe they are for buoyancy we'll check that out after deleting the propellers we'll see about that then there is fuel in here encased in a light armor casing but supported by a lot of heavy armor this thing even has a lot and I mean a lot of air pockets look at that three thick metal armor then there is some air pockets in here giant air pocket for buoyancy and stuff and there is an AI in there <laughs> in here air pockets everywhere beside the turrets air pockets this is the engine room and this is more air pockets around the turret so this thing is very resistant to fragment based shells mainly hessian heat and probably even frag just because how much air pockets this thing has before reaching any vital part then there are two compartments of engines encased in light armor supported by metal of course metal partitioning a lot of hull partitioning so it would need a lot of holes to sink this thing <laughs> search protectors and four shields with it I can already say this is a shield spam craft 
This is nicely armored and on top of that this has shield spam. This is gonna be formidable. <laughs> Look at that, three to four metal everywhere. Now let's check out the deck. The deck in some places is too thick but it is mostly one thick and that is sometimes concerning because one thick deck and then the turret that is bad if you're facing a high-flying aircraft it will punch through a deck kill your turrets be all dandy but I think this is a brawler kind of ship supposed to go against an other ships and in that regard this is really really heavily armored and there are some electronics and stuff here and there are some batteries in here are those torpedoes yes those are torpedoes oh boy I am gonna be scared going against this thing this is the cockpit really cozy cockpit with again manual control I really like that oh okay this is not a closed box the cockpit it's just a platform made out of heavy armor what's the point of hiding heavy armor there yeah there's nothing there's nothing underneath it this heavy armor is just to look good and increase the cost we don't need that cockpit anyway <laughs> these ACBs turn shields on and off they're not that protected even though they're sitting on heavy armor they're not protected doors doors leading to the outside wow let's let's head outside shall okay we can't <laughs> wow I was getting excited but yeah we can't we're blocked off by chairs what the hell do we need three chairs here for <laughs> a door who needs to open the door when you can just blow it up <laughs> again a lot of shielding these are missiles a lot of frag missiles this is this has amazing amounts of firepower I'll tell you that smoke <laughs> red boys radars oh wow <laughs> let's move on to the internals shall we and even when we get up here near the two main guns I think they are the main guns because they are the most there are rams heading out there's a lot of propellers pushing it forwards but not enough to move it fast enough of course a ton and I mean a ton of ammo a ton of fuel resources basically this is the resource area I would say search protectors covering up for four shields each and this is the shielding scheme look at that everywhere there are four shields so they are gonna be butterfly shields with heavy EMP protection oh my lord <laughs> there's some laser detectors with smokes more propellers these are turning propellers and these engines bloody hell look at the amount of exhaust <laughs> So each engine is individual on its own and this is a very redundant engine. If one of them goes out, not all of them will go out. But how I build my own engines are, if you have a hole in the engine anywhere around the whole engine section, the whole engine falls apart. And that's not a good part on me, but it saves a lot of fuel and this thing has, wow. <laughs> nine engines per compartment and it has two engine compartments like this one in the back and one in the front in here this is three carburetors and four injectors and I was saying this thing is an efficient engine no sir no this is gonna guzzle down fuel look at that 78 power per unit at 100 <laughs> percent doesn't have any turbo or supercharger so that efficiency is not gonna change <laughs> pretty inefficient engine but pretty powerful engine I would say in the front it is the same a lot of ammo but not a lot of fuel instead he has replaced the fuel in here with a lot of ammo makers underneath that there are a lot of AI processing cards and another mainframe I think this thing has two mainframe yep one main main frame here and second redundant mainframe in the air cavity back there so yeah this is a good one so the AI room has heavy armor protection only one layer of heavy armor though but there are a lot of stuff surrounding it so 
I don't think it's gonna be easy to shoot that thing off. More missiles around in here, frag missiles, the torpedoes are relatively fast, EMP and AC torpedoes and my god, there are a lot of torpedoes in this thing, <laughs> wow. These are two Gatling guns with one meter odd loaders, not bell fed, but one meters, which shoot, as you guys can see, complete frag spams. Complete, complete frag spams. And I, by the looks of the shells, can deduce that it is a maximum gauge Gatling gun. Wow, this is a re really nicely Tetris one. A little bit of wastage of space in the middle, but. I guess that's not really necessary to pack up every single airspace in there. <laughs> and the turrets are protected by heavy armor strapped to the turret itself. Heavy armor strapped, so he has basically strapped the armor to the turrets itself. Hence, Hessian heat protection by a long mile. <laughs> Gatling guns and then we'll move on to the particle cannons Yep, this thing is basically mirrored This thing is basically mirrored for half an hour two particle cannons four Gatling guns and Six main guns. That's a lot of firepower 8820 power per shot usage with 6615 impact damage. That's not too shabby actually not too shabby. 6,000 impact damage for 8,000 power and I think it has a lot of accuracy. Focuses more vertically because it is on a turret and it is gonna be easier for it to shoot down aircrafts. Yeah, very efficient one, very good particle cannon. Not that expensive because he didn't add 200 pipes like I did. <laughs> the middle cannons, the star of the show, color coded into red, non colored, and blue. 8 meter long autoloaders fed directly, no clips involved, but I guess that works for this. Oh, there are two of those back to back one up here and one down here 8 meter long auto loaders amazing this thing is gonna have a lot of firepower I gotta check the shells out though and of course in the middle lots of cooling units and stuff so really simple yet very very effective designs on the weapons and the missiles even have ejectors to them so they're not gonna waste any time being inside the craft. Not. It doesn't have the turret armoring strapped to the ship, but in, instead it's strapped to the turrets. Let's get back to the cockpit. Let's try and rotate the turrets. Let's see if they do rotate. Of course they will. They have giant air pockets around them. Yep. Oh boy. This is this thing is a little laggy. <laughs> and this thing is slow as hell. Even with three meter turrets the amount of heavy armor on these things are making them very slow but not slow enough to hurt this craft let's have a shot all right particle cannons these thing as we saw are frag spams and I'm curious what are the main guns shooting the main guns sh are shooting disruptor conduits frag spams more frag spams with smoke wow <laughs> and these are hollow points H hollow point HE Wow this thing is evil this thing is most certainly evil hollow point with these disruptors oh my god this is gonna tear apart big ships pretty pretty easily let's look at the fire rate all right the middle guns fire at a decent I think 70 rounds per minute let's check that out 50 rounds per minute that is good enough I would say so yeah guys with that I can hypothesize hypothesize is that a word I don't know I'm just saying that. <laughs> with that I can hypothesize that this thing is very resistant to all kinds of damage because because a heavily stacked armor and B a lot of air gaps so yeah let's shoot this thing to smithereens shall we I have absolutely no words guys 
four layers of butterfly shielding these are four layers of butterfly shielding each and it has it all covered look at the amount of shields this thing has ridiculously shielded craft and even on the top the deck is single layered shielded but it's good enough I would say this is mostly a broadside ship not meant to go against airships look at that from top it looks vulnerable but from the sides you can't even see the damn ship all right guys shooty time he chills in the middle what oh wh wow oh, oh oh okay and the turrets are uh, gone Wow <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Should I start loving heat again? All right, guys. So what I decided was let's not shoot it in the bottom part here because this will be underwater and this will be very hard to shoot. Instead, we will shoot it in the parts above water where it is meant to be shot. Let's shoot a few heat shells here. And there goes the heat shells detonated and there should be yep heat in here inside here and the neck is not protected what that's gonna be so vulnerable to heat yeah pros parkour you definitely have to protect the neck of this turret this thing this exposed thing this whole exposed thing in here is gonna be so vulnerable to heat and stuff. Let's look at that. We'll shoot it in slow motion. Heat particles everywhere. <laughs> More heat shells incoming in here. Particles going off from the other side. That is good. Let's shoot this thing. Oh, it has. Yep, it has killed the neck of the turret next up is hash this is gonna be really interesting so hash blows up in here and the shockwave does not reach the armoring so yeah shield spam protected this thing against hash let's sh shred this thing up with hash and see if this takes any kind of damage nope completely has resistant Frag spam. Nope, no chance. No chance at all. What if we aim a little higher? Oh, it's reloading now. I used all of the frag. <laughs> but yeah, will that kind of shield spam? Oh, no, sir, no. No frag chance. So, heat is the only one that has managed to damage the middle of the ship amazing isn't it EMP negated hollow point negated disruptors now these are maximum gauge disruptors 8 meter disruptors let's see what kind of firepower the shields need to disappear Not that many, actually. <laughs> now that we have shot the middle part, let's shoot the side part, shall we? Coming up is heat. Wow, it <laughs> deflected the heat completely. That is impressive. Let's shoot this area again with heat. Yep. Heat is too great, hence it goes through the whole thing. Doesn't damage this all that much. Really, really good armoring scheme. Shoot the heat down in here, if you can. Looks like it did a lot of damage, but not enough to take out the whole turret. Impressive, I would say. So the middle part is more vulnerable to heat than the side parts. And what about this area? Yep, heat metric too high. 
Oh, something blew up. Um, hello? Are you gonna? Oh boy! More heat frags! Oh, 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 oh! Balls! Lagged out. Um. <laughs> oh, bo oh boy, 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 boy! No. Uh, okay. <laughs> so heat carnage in here. When the heat frags spawn in here, it goes through the heavy armor and goes inside. So yeah, this is this area is a little vulnerable to heat. But not that much. I shot at least 20 that large a shell of heat consecutively to it to make that happen. So yeah, pretty safe from heat, I would say. Alright, shields turned off, heat. Oh boy, soon enough. It should kill the turret, but actually, without the shields, what is happening is all the heat is going through the other side, as you guys saw, and the turret is... Yeah, the turret is very safe from heat if the shields are not there just because the heat metric is so high it's ignoring the craft. <laughs> that is a weird turn of events, isn't it? Alrighty, heat in the front. Yep, still ignoring the ship. Heat in the front. Oh, wow. I want to see what. Ah, ow, ouch. <laughs> Heat went through this, went through the one meter tall deck and shredded this apart. So, without shields, the front is very vulnerable to heat. The rest this gets ignored <laughs> by the heat. Let's shoot some heat in this section so we can see what happened. There we go. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh boy. So, heat went there. Lagged the game for a little bit. See what happened. Heat went through this area. Okay. Yep. Through the corners. Went in. Blowed everything up. And that's the end of the turret. So, Gatling guns are really, really vulnerable to heat. Next up is Hash. Wow, much more dangerous than the heat. <laughs> A few more hash. Oh, it killed it. It killed it. I think it killed the neck. Yep, damaged it in here. Killed a few things here and killed the turret cap. Wow, how? It killed the turret cap. Let's shoot some more hash in here. Yeah, most definitely. Kills the turret cap. Wow. <laughs> Not that much damage to the turrets, just because a lot of air pockets and a lot of armor. So yeah, safe from Hesh if it hits this area, but not so safe if it hits this area. Let's go to on to the particle cannon, Hesh. Oh boy. <laughs> Shaved off the particle cannon. Completely. What about the internals? I didn't do almost that much damage. So yeah, this is very nicely armored craft, I would say. Not that dangerous for the front ones. Uh, uh, w wow. Okay. Taking the word back. The one meter deck in here is hurting it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Indeed. So this is very vulnerable just because even if you hit it from the sides, there's only like one or two metal at most here and then it goes in. It goes in, it blows this thing up. Alright, next up is frag. Wow. Ho ho ho. That melted through that thing like butter. Not good. Wow. Yep. Butter indeed. <laughs> what about this? Yep. Butter again. So frag. Oh my lord. Now I am afraid of frag and this thing will definitely be blown up by frag. Yep. 
no questions asked. The front turrets are very vulnerable to everything. If the shields are not there. Next up is EMP. EMP there didn't even travel. Wow. Again, didn't even travel. Traveling a little bit, traveling a lot. Yep, keep traveling and lost in some surge protectors. So yeah, doesn't kill all that much stuff. A few AI connectors here and there, but not really big issue, I would say. Yeah, look at that. Halepind! Bloom! <laughs> Same as Frag, just eats through stuff. Produces big holes. <laughs> Exposes armor for other shell types to get in. Kills stuff on itself and this is gonna get blown up. No, surprisingly, Hull Point does not instantly kill this thing in like two or three shells. But yeah, it definitely damages the overall ship instead of the internal part, so that is a good damage type as well. Alright guys, since this thing costs more than the Feral Hound and is more than the Feral Hound in volume, we'll move straight to the Feral Hound and see if it beats it. I hate to admit it, but I think it will. <laughs> let's not give anyone a head start, let's start the battle, shall we? So, the Feral Hound has started shooting stuff, the particle cannons barely hit, if any. Oh, a lot of particle cannons did hit, but they're impact damage, so they are not gonna get pierced. The missiles on his part is coming on. We are shooting first just because the turrets on our Manzir is not fast enough in their turn rate. One of the turrets on the Dominator has been started. And the AI of the Dominator is called Dominate All, in case main AI is dominated. <laughs> that is such a cool thing to do there, but I do not name my mainframes. Feral Hound shooting as much as he can before the Dominator dominates the Feral Hound with frags and now comes the Disruptors and the Hollow Points HE and whatnot. Oh boy. The frag spam is real on this one. Let's see what has happened to the Dominator. We can already see that the frag spam is most definitely shredding through the Hell Knight. The missiles are coming our way, really strong missiles, while our missiles are going their way, probably gonna get distracted by the flares and what has happened in you, Mr. Dominator? So, I can already see that my Feral Hound is targeting the ammo and it has blown up the ammo so it has gone to the front a little but then that is really bad for the Feral Hound because it is not gonna target it is indeed not gonna target any sort of weaponry on the Dominator at all so that is really bad this turret is completely gone <laughs> And hollow point stuff, everything coming in, the shields are gone, Feral Hound is soon gonna die. Amazing! One against the Feral Hound! <laughs> it is 6295. No questions asked, it won. And the Feral Hound has gotten something blown up and it is gonna go to the skies now. Oh. Lag, lag, ah. Uh. <laughs> the ammo must have blown up. Look at the big giant holes in the Feral Hound now. Wins heavily against the Feral Hound. But... Something must have happened to it. Why is it sinking? What the hell? Um, hello? Oh, <laughs> this turret, as I said, is very vulnerable, hence got blown up, hence no more buoyancy in that area. This area has holes in it, so no buoyancy in that area. 
and it is sinking. Ah, it is sinking now. Oh, <laughs> heavy plummeting in the back. <laughs> So yeah guys, I don't know. It was killing the Fairhound, but once the Fairhound managed to take out one of its turret, it is now sinking. It is now sinking and the Fairhound might just have an upper hand here. What? <laughs> so it cannot float up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These propellers are not working as well. What is the Why are the propellers not working? Are the engines completely gone? I do not know what happened, but these engines are most definitely working. I think the PID is gone. Hence the propellers are not working. Hence this thing is having a hard, hard time staying out of the water. God damn. <laughs> An amazing turn of events. Ammo blowing up everywhere. Guns should blow up in a few seconds. These guns have stopped shooting because I would reckon this thing doesn't have ammos anymore. Let's see if it has ammos anymore. Uh, yep, no ammo and no more ammo storage. Hence, the directly fed autoloaders are struggling because they do not have any internal buffer of ammunition. Wow! <laughs> and are these... Shells even reaching the feral hound? No, because they do not have super calves. Yep, they don't have super calves, so they're not reaching the feral hound. Feral hound might just win this round. What? I was really rooting for the Dominator. It's such a good craft. And at this point, I really do think the feral hound is gonna win. The feral hound is repairing itself while the Dominator is at 77%. One of the main turrets is now gonna be blown up. Oh, oh, ow, ouch. The cockpit got blown up. <laughs> so yeah, guys, even if there is engine power, I think its PID suffered a heavy damage, hence the propeller stopped. So I would say having redundant PIDs on this thing might just work. But yeah guys, after this, I was considering not having the impoint selection on the Feral Hound, but now I'm considering having the impoint selection because the hash killed off the ammo completely, hence the main guns of this thing stopped firing, and hence the Feral Hound won. Wow! This calls for a rematch, guys. This definitely calls for a rematch. So it's now going to the bottom of the ocean and I think it is safe to say the Feral Hound will eventually win through all its torpedoes and it will repair itself and start shooting at full speed again. Oh, no more AI left, so it has one. No questions asked, Feral Hound. You made me proud, buddy. You really made me proud. The belt armor was gone, but it had a hard time going through one heavy armor, one metal, and one stone. But it did went through in a few parts, and it did have a few engines blown up, but the missiles going up, the distractor missiles, the stuff missiles, and I think the Feral Hound will come again on firing first because Feral Hound has faster rotating turrets. And it is hitting the center of mass of this ship at the moment. Oh boy, something blew up, something, yep. The middle turret got blown off. And now it's trying to hit the backside. No, Feral Hound, why you do this? <laughs> why you do this, Feral Hound? So the Feral Hound is shooting stuff. One of the main guns of this thing is gone. The other main gun is trying to shoot at its best. The frag shooters have stopped and now they are starting again the missiles are reaching heavily towards it the missiles did not get distracted because the distractors are i think already up high in the sky and this is not looking good for the dominator this is not looking good for the dominator at all the dominator 91 percent feral hound 96 percent but the feral hound is being stupid 
and it's trying to hit the absolute front of the craft. What is up with you, Fairlound? Kill this thing already! <laughs> the Nominator taking hash after hash after hash in its main belly, killing off almost all of its firepower. The middle turret lives though, the main middle turret lives and that might win the Dominator this fight. That might help the Dominator do what it says. Dominate all. But the hash shells are now coming towards the middle turret and if it if the Fairhound manages to kill the middle turret, the victory ensures. Fairhound has just scored himself the second victory. God damn, Fairhound. When did you get this powerful? What happened to you? <laughs> But there is still hope for the Dominator because the front frag spam is shooting and this time somehow Yo, no, I thought that the propellers are this time working, but no, they're not They're not for some reason the front ammo got blown off and I have to get to the root of these guys, but after taking a few after taking a few seconds of paddling the Dominator just stops its propellers in its tracks for some reason and the front ammo blow up is definitely trying to send it to space but the weight of this thing isn't allowing it to. What? Yep, the connections have been severed between the turret cap and the main body through Hesh. The turret cap needs a little bit more protection, I would say. And more kaboom booms! Where has the kaboom boom landed? The middle turret finally gives up and should take the ship with it. Oh god, don't crash. Don't crash, oh boy, there we go. The ship is below 60% and is gonna die now. See guys, this is why I like clip cannons more than non-clip cannons. If the ammo is gone in the ship, clip cannons will still fire because they have clips. But the non-clipped ones? No sir, no. They won't be firing. I was really hoping that we could make it go against the Thare after it defeated the Fairland, but it could not in two matches, so... So guys, the Dominator was almost on par with the Fairhound. Let's see how it does against the Hell Knight. Both having two AIs each, and I am pretty sure the Hell Knight is gonna die a horrible death in the hands of the Dominator. But as always, the Hell Knight shoots first because again the Dominator stars are really really so. I would really recommend having the heavy armor on the ship and not on the turret itself. And the Dominator has started shooting. <laughs> I'm not gonna even look at the Dominator because it's deflecting everything. The Hell Knight is shooting at it except the laser. It does not have that much smoke as you guys might think, as I might think, but it is managing to laser quite a few things. Oh, and I <laughs> got fragged. <laughs> Jesus Christ, every time I forget to get out of cockpits and stuff, and I get fragged. Outsiding, and it's lasers are essentially gonna be out of range in a few seconds now one of the lasers have been taken out one of the laser guns is still alive and it is getting its face melted off EMP the laser is most definitely gone now yep no questions asked it absolutely annihilates the hell knight as if there was a doubt in that <laughs> <laughs> there are even engine parts falling down at this point in Hell Knight's life. <laughs> Green goo though, looks like it has been radiated. <laughs> I am surprised that the Hell Knight is still in the air after taking so so much damage.
Now the right side is gonna look like the left side in a few seconds. <laughs> Man, the shields are still doing a decent job at deflecting half of the frags, but it's just too much for this. <laughs> Lots of heavy armor just goes down, disconnects, let's say. And the Hellite finally is losing his balance. It's gonna go down. Oh, it hasn't lost its balance yet. It is still up. What the hell? Die already! <laughs> and something goes kaboom! Goes the ammo. Finished. 48% Rest So my final verdict would be I would rate the ship a solid 7 out of 10 It is heavily armored, it has big air pockets, hence very resistance to all kinds of frag based shells This thing costs 426k and is about 30k volume the max speed is 12 meters per second and is a very heavy ship. With shields, it is resistance to almost all kind of damage except heat. And without shields, the middle part is still resistance to almost all kinds of damage, but the front and back turret are very vulnerable without the shields. It manages to annihilate the Hell Knight and almost manages to tie with the Feral Hound. So it's a really well-built ship and almost will carry you through the Nitro campaign very easily. And that will be all for this episode here, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoy watching this video. Like this video if you liked it, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe. If if you want to download this craft or submit your own crafts for me to play with, links will be in the description for our Discord server. We have a lot of fun there, we do all kinds of stuff. Hopefully you join and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one.